I want to tell you, for more than 33 years, this song is like my breath. Every day I sing this, or rather, yeah, I pray this. And I have seen great power, great power. So our life, our life is, ah, okay, I come in another way. Luke chapter 4, in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4 says, Jesus, after the baptism, came to, filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from, from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert. Everybody read that. Luke chapter 4, 1. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. So here are these two points. First point is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But that is not enough. Our life, Christian life, is a life in the Spirit. We call life in the Spirit seminar. What is life in the Spirit seminar? To be filled with the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. That is a practical life. Christian life is a life filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. So evangelization is exactly the work of the Holy Spirit. So to say, every day, every day we need a filling. But that feeling is not enough. And we do whatever we like. No. Filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. Every day. If you do that, our life will be very easy. Very easy. Very easy. Now, once it so happened, a parish in Kerala invited me to preach a retreat in the parish. So the parish priest at the uh, parish priest said, I am not a charismatic, I am not interested. But the people wanted, so I invited Thomas Paul. This he is telling on the last day of the retreat. The last day of the retreat, he said, I was not at all interested on this charismatic hallelujah, hallelujah group. <laughs> but the parishioners wanted to invite Thomas Paul, so I called him. But now my opinion changed. <laughs> he said, in the parish house, in the priest's house, I was given the room to stay that is just above the room of the parish priest. <laughs> so he said, this man is staying just above my room. And I don't know what is he doing from morning three o'clock, there is a movement in the room. <laughs> and then from morning, Nine o'clock to evening, six o'clock, he is continuously preaching. How is he doing this? 
for me to make a sunday homely of 10 minutes whole week i am struggling and preparing 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 but he is speaking morning to evening now i realize there is holy spirit <laughs> it is only because of the holy spirit otherwise no man can do this therefore i have come to celebrate this thanksgiving mass at the last now my opinion changed he said now i am telling this to make a matter so strong practically you know i get up morning around 3 o'clock and or 3:30 i pray fill me fill me fill me fill me fill me fill me lead me lead me lead me and then 4:30 i have a international prayer session preaching the catechism of catholic church malayalam then english then only i am coming to the retreat here so many people told me thomas paul this will be too much for you you will not be able to manage this the session live session and the retreat will be too much don't do it but the lord said do it it is not you i am doing through you now i want to say this god gives us extraordinary power that is called led by the spirit led by the spirit so i have somehow understood this holy spirit not only we give us feeling but the holy spirit lead our life so in religious life whatever apostolate you are doing this is the sum and substance filled by the spirit and led by the spirit so as we are finally the last session of this evangelization workshop seminar i would like to emphasize on this point led by the spirit and how to be led by the spirit so already now you must recollect i said sometime listening to the spirit listening to the spirit or offer yourself oh lord i am in your hands oh holy spirit i am in your hand you use me you lead me and truly you will it will become like you see driving when you learn driving initially it is very difficult you may fall down but then you are able to drive okay now second aspect is faith our faith must increase to be led by the spirit so when jesus said whoever believes in me this is one of jesus's often teaching all those who believe in me all those who are thirsty come to me and drink from me john chapter 7 37 and 38 john chapter 7 37 and 38 on the last and greatest day of the feast jesus stood up and 
exclaimed, Let anyone who thirst come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me. See, that's the point. As the scripture says, Rivers of living water will flow. Now please complete what is written in your gospel. From within, from within. From within. Rivers of living water will flow from within. On, based on this is the, our song written. Jeevan jal ka srodh mujh me beha do I don't know mujh se it is it meant from inside Jeeva jal tin arvi ai niranj kavin origana me that is the original text Jeeva jal tin arvi ai so here, these are the things when we learn the scripture. Here it is written, rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. But in another translation, it may be, see, jivan jalka, Srodh, you see what is the, what is the word you said? Srodh, Jivan Jalika, Srodh. Is it river? Srodh. Srodh means it is a it's a font. It's a font. A font means it is everlasting, inexhaustible font. And it is so, ex we may feel it is exaggerated expression. God who is the source, and what has he given? Has he given something to drink? No, he has given the source itself is given to us. The source. Jivan Jalika Srodh. So, we have difficulty in translation and language. So, when we go into more understanding all the teaching of the church and the church father says, the very source is given to us. The source. Who is the source? God himself. But what is only one point? Whoever believes in me. Whoever believes in me. From his heart. So when we believe in Christ, our heart become, become the source. The source is planted into us. So, St. Paul will say, it's not me, but Christ dwells in me. So, we must recognize, it is not we receive a little Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit. We must understand that the source itself is given to us. Source. And in John chapter 12, we may be repeating 12, 14, is it? Whoever, 12, not 12, 14, 14, 12, sorry, I am sorry, 14, 12. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me, apply the same, believes in me, he will do the works that I do. <laughs> and 
will do greater ones than this. I often remember uh, when I was in Mumbai, Mumbai, I happened to have a evening session of Father Rufus Pereira, my early days, early days before, just at the beginning of my, and Rufus, Father Rufus Pereira was teaching this scripture. He said, Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do all that I do and greater thing. When I heard it, I thought this father is mistaken. Maybe he has not understood or uh, misquoting that. How can we do the same thing as Christ did? He is God. I was almost sure the father has made some mistake. I will go home and find out the scripture and tell him, Lord, no, sorry. I really ran home and opened the Bible and I want to ring up him and say, no, Father, we cannot do Christ, what Christ is doing. And you say you can do all that Christ does and even greater things. What is the logic? <clears throat> we are ordinary human beings. He is God. How can we do exactly what God does? There is something wrong. <clears throat> but to my astonishment when I looked oh, 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 it is written I said to you whoever believes in me will do the works that I do I was surprised what? And will do greater ones than this because I am going to the Father. So what's the meaning? What am I going to do? I am going to the Father. I am going to the Father means already I said it Ah, Father Raphael wanted a clarification on that little more. I will now explain it. When he says, I am going to the Father means, I am going to the Father means, after completing the mission, mission of Jesus is incarnation, passion, death and resurrection and ascension. Now here, Catechism 612, 618. In 618, you will find 618. The cross is unique sacrifice of Christ the one mediator between God and man. Now, completely different picture is coming here. From the cross, the teaching is going to the incarnation. Because in his incarnate divine person, he has in some way united himself to every man. So, when we say, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus Christ, when we say, believe means, first of all, we must believe in the mystery of incarnation. In evangelization, we must believe the whole humanity is in the body of Christ from incarnation. We think, oh, they are Hindus, they are Muslims, they are that, this and that. We should never, never think like that. They are non-Christians. 
Nobody is non-Christians. All are Christians. The whole humanity are Christians. Because from incarnation point of view, please read, because in his incarnation, incarnative divine person, he has in some way united himself to every man. It is written in so many places in catechism. So the whole humanity is in the body of Christ. Now from that point of view, you must understand, Jesus says, you shall do all that I do. <laughs> because we are already in the divine person of Christ through incarnation. Is it due to any of our faith? Is it because of our faith? Faith comes afterwards. That is why in the public ministry of Jesus, most of them were not having any faith. He, they were not baptized, they were not Christians. Now one point as I referred in Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, he went across the lake to a deserted place to take rest. There already all the people came on the road before he reached there. He saw a multitude of people and he felt pity on them. And because they are carrying so many sick people, carrying from the home, just they want to touch him. And he healed them all. So what is happening there? And this is the point which Pope Francis said, Jesus said, blessed are you. And he did not say, you will be blessed. He said, you are blessed. Whom he said this? He spoke at the Sermon on Mount to the, all the people. None of them were there baptized. Baptism came after Pentecost. Of course, his disciples were there. He said, blessed are you. The reason he said is, you are seeing me, Jesus Christ, God become man. Through incarnation, all of you are blessed because you are in the body of Christ. Bless, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I will explain that. So, that is through the sacrament, we become a child of God is one thing, but through the incarnation, through the birth of humanity, God created the humanity as God's children. So we say in the encyclical, uh, encyclical, mm, what is the name of it? That, um, uh, uh, oh, we are all brothers, fratelli tutti, fratelli tutti, fratelli tutti. What is the fratelli tutti? We are all brothers. We are all children of the one father. So that is the first understanding we have. But when we are baptized, we are experiencing the salvific grace and becoming, becoming adopted children of God. Adopted children of God. What is adopted children of God? We become adopted child of God who has 
all the right to receive the inheritance what Jesus himself is having. That is happening through our baptism. And through baptism, all our sins are forgiven. Through baptism, we become a new creation. But before our baptism, baptism we receive only when we have faith. So before our baptism, we must understand the creation, the incarnation. Through incarnation, the whole humanity is in the body of Christ. So, all those who are baptized, they become children of God in the sense they become adopted children of God. That is, Jesus is the Son of God. Through baptism, we become his brother and sister. All the right what the Father has given to Jesus, we will have. And we become co heir with him. Is it clear, Father? Hello, is it, are you satisfied? Eh? Yeah. So, this is where I tell you the easy way is, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So all this is the matter of detail we have to learn from the teaching. See, that is where, now I take 600 and 469. 469. Now the question is, for the sake of those who are watching this, the question is, if through incarnation, if we are all in the body of Christ, like children of God, then why there is an adopted child? Why there should be a baptism, things like that? So these are the matter of faith we have to grow. It is not our human idea. It must be learned from the teaching, feed a depositum, the deposit of faith the constitution of the Catholic Church. So 469 is very interesting. 469 says, the church thus confess that Jesus is inseparably true God and true man. Jesus is inseparably true God and true man. So where from he got the humanity? What is his humanity? What is his humanity? So these are all already gone through a lot of her uh, heretic teachings and the church has defined through many, many uh, council teachings. He is truly son of God who without ceasing to be God and Lord became a man and our brother, our brother. <coughs> 468, after the council of Chaldeon, some made of Christ's human nature a kind of personal subject. Against them, the Fifth Ecumenical Council at Constantinople in 550 confessed that there is but one hypothesis or person which is our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the Trinity, thus everything in Christ's human nature is to be attributed to his divine person as its proper subject. Not only his miracles, but also his sufferings 
and even his death. He who was crucified in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is true God, Lord of glory, and one of the Holy Trinity. So, Jesus in the Holy Trinity, consubstantial with the Father, consubstantial with the Holy Spirit, that Son of God became man. As assuming our human nature 461 461 you note down all these numbers taking St. John's expression the word became flesh the church calls incarnation the fact that the son of God assumed human nature Assumed human nature. That is what in our liturgy we pray in the liturgy. Angayde Devi ka jeevan il nangale pang pangali galakan ang nangale manusya sabawon si gerichu. To participate in, you understand, no? I cannot pick up the page. So, this is the matter of faith that he assumed a human nature in order to accomplish our salvation. In it, in a hymn cited by St. Paul, the church sings the mystery of the incarnation. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in form of God, did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. In the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. So, our faith in Jesus Christ is founded, the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ is in the, in the faith in the incarnation. Why word become flesh? The Son of God, eternal word become flesh means taking the word became flesh to make us partakers of the divine nature. For this, 460, for this is why the word became man. The Son of God became Son of Man. So that man, by entering into communion with the Word and thus receiving divine sonship, might become Son of God. For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. <laughs> we become God. How is that we become God? Because we are in the body of Christ. Saint Athanasius. For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. The only begotten Son of God wanting to make us sharers in his divinity assumed our nature. So our human nature, he took, that is what we, one, uh, on the first day I read, marvelous exchange. Wunderbare Austos, 526. That his exchange is, he took our human nature. Our human nature means the whole humanity. 
humanity flesh also means not only human flesh even all the creatures all the creatures the whole creation is in body of christ and that is our faith that is the dogma of the incarnation and when we believe this then only our evangelization become very easy then we consider somebody not as a hindu or a muslim or a sikh or a punjabi or a parsi or a non christian no he is also equally like us in the body of christ from the incarnation point of view but he do not know he do not know and letting him know that is the good news the good news is hello my dear you are a brother of jesus christ you are a sister of jesus christ you are blessed blessed are you if jesus sees you he will embrace you you are in my body through incarnation this must be our understanding then only we can evangelize easily anybody whom we see we have to recognize he is a person in the body of christ so mother teresa says i see this man who is a leper completely worms coming out people throw him in the gutter but jesus said i am i am that when i was sick you visited me i was sick i was that sick man not somebody like me the big success of mother was she believed verbatim this words of jesus when i was sick when i was naked when i was thirsty i was that bad she believed that and so she got such an enthusiasm to pick up that person who is thinking terribly with the worms but she sees that is christ that is another christ that is a person christ in the human so that is why mother defined another terminology of contemplation we think contemplation means sitting in the chapel adoring the lord there that is a contemplation but for mother she says we are contemplatives in the marketplace we are contemplatives in the marketplace means in the gutter in the market human beings are thrown but they are christ i see in that person christ and i adore in that person christ that is our contemplation so this now when we learn from the catechism only the dogmatic teaching from the from the from the time beginning from uh, saint athanasius saint irenius and finally saint thomas aquinas all the doctors of the church teaching is quoted here and so we understand the mystery of christ and when we understand this mystery of christ then only our faith is built in christ i had an experience uh, once in a adoration center uh, in a eucharistic adoration i helped to develop a eucharistic adoration in in germany 
So every year I used to go there to help them. So there is lot of people come for counseling. So one lady came and she said, I have a feel a problem with my kinder. I have lot of problem with my children. Now normally in our Indian contest, we will not ask, are you married? <laughs> but in the contests, I should ask, I was inspired to ask, are you married? She said, no. Now the next question I asked, are these three children are from one man? No, they are from three men. And now she began to say, all three of them are in prison. They are, they are all very strong, very strong so-called people. They are all in prison. So now, I don't know, I felt such a compassion for her. So I asked her, now your, these three sons are already behaving like their father, exactly. And I don't know what to do. And I was overwhelmed with the mercy of God. I just stretched my hands like this and she fell on my breast and I hugged her and I cried sometime. Oh Lord, help her. You incarnated for her also. She and her, these three men and their three sons are in your body. And few minutes we remained in that and after that she said, I could feel the mercy of the Lord is flowing into me. And she says, I am so, I never thought you will do this to me. I thought you may be angry to me, you may blame me, you may scold me. But I could feel the presence of Christ. And I told her, Christ loves you and loved your children. They are all baptized. They are now children of God. And this adoration, this Eucharistic Lord is your only solution. Come here, prostrate down and say, Oh Lord, help me. Help me. Now there are, the situation of the world is like this. Our evangelization should lead to people like this to help them to, to, to experience the saving love of Christ. For that we should believe all these so-called sinful people are in the body of Christ through, through incarnation. Now, when we come to the baptism, before we receive baptism, we, are, we have faith in Jesus Christ and faith in the whole salvation plan. But a person who do not know about Christ, who do not know anything about Christ, we have to evangelize. So what is the first step of evangelization? It is our faith. Our faith. What should I believe? I remember now one mother Teresa's sister, 
she was very much fiery to evangelize she was one of the s10 in a contemplative house so when i was giving retreat she said i was in the market and when i wanted to evangelize a lady she refused no 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 i don't want to talk to you all religion go to god why you only talk about your religion all religion go to god so she said no 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 wait a minute but our religion is not going to god instead god coming to you hey what god coming to me yes that is our religion suddenly she stopped and she decided to listen to her she said jesus came and took a human nature of us jesus who is god himself he came to live with us and to take our sins and make us holy and take us to heaven we are not going to heaven to search of god god came down to us ha uh-huh. ha oh that is a that is the good news that is why it is a good news all religion talk about going to god but we talk about a god coming to man that is evangelization so first of all we must believe that a person who do not know about christ an example now in mark chapter mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 four people carried a paralytic four people carried a paralytic we know that we know that incident four people carried a paralytic and when they came in the place where jesus was ministering there was such a crowd not able to get in and what they did they had such an enthusiasm such a confidence to reach to god they climbed they took him over the roof and broke up on the roof of somebody's house and lowered him down jesus saw the bricks falling down what's happening there hey, somebody cut up on the roof and lowering and four of them are looking at jesus four people and lowering one man paralyzed now my question is what did jesus say to him first let me hear you please speak loudly what did jesus say to the paralytic without looking the bible please tell come on quick your sins are forgiven any other answer sorry you have failed eh eh what is that did you say something what is that eh i could hear i could not hear please son son ah, very good give a clap to her very good my son my child that's it that's important see when you learn all these incidents you have to grow meticulously so jesus saw their faith the four people's faith this man's faith is not the point here he saw the faith of that four evangelizers and said to the paralytic son or in another version my child your sins are forgiven first he is not baptized he is seeing as son through our mystery of incarnation we must understand that this paralytic is in the body of christ
Okay. Now, I, I wanted to, I came to this point. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, we shall do all that I do and greater things than I do. So, because I am going to the Father. Now, I came to this topic to understand this word. I am going to the Father. So, when he say, I am going to the Father, why he is going to the Father? Because he came from the Father. So, we must first understand how he came from the Father. What for he came from the Father? <laughs> he going to the Father. Why he is going to the Father? Because he came from the Father. What for he came from the Father? To incarnate. So what happens when he go to the Father? Now you remember, try to remember our song. Ishwar Emmanuel Bena my papi uska beta bena. It is a prophecy. Isaiah prophecy says the virgin will conceive. He will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel means Emmanuel means God with us. Now this is where I was telling. From that time onwards, what is the status of the Trinity? In the Trinity, we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit and us. Because the Son become Emmanuel. So what is the Trinity now? When God become Emmanuel, He assumed the whole humanity in His body. So what is the Trinity? Father, Holy Spirit, Son and the humanity. So when he says, I am going to the Father, that is because I came from the Father, became man, took the humanity in my body and I raised the humanity on the cross. I suffered for them. I gave the loss of guilt, the the ransom for their sin I sanctified them and I buried them and I am I rose and took the resurrected body to the father now how is Emmanuel now Emmanuel where is Emmanuel now so Ephesians chapter 2 6 Ephesians chapter 2 6 says the risen Lord Risen Lord is in the right hand of the Father with us, with us. He took us into the right hand of the Father. 2.6 Raise us up with Him. Please read that text in your Bible. Because many people have not focused this text enough. Ephesians 2.6 Everybody read loudly. raised us with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. The whole humanity in his body he took when he ascended. He said when I am ascended when I will be ascended, I will draw everybody with me. Paragraph 600.
648. 648 in paragraph 648. Christ's resurrection is an object of faith. In that, it is a transcendent intervention of God himself in creation and history. In it, the three divine persons act together as one and manifest their own proper characteristics. The Father's power raised up Christ the Son and by doing so, perfectly introduced the Son's humanity, including his body, into the Trinity into the Trinity. Please write it down, these words. Father's power raised up Christ. Christ, his son, and by doing so, perfectly introduced his son's humanity, including his body, including his body, into the Trinity. So Christ is in the Trinity not like earlier time before incarnation. Before incarnation, Son of God was in the Trinity as eternal word. But after the incarnation and passion, death and resurrection, Christ introduced his humanity including his body into the Trinity. Jesus is conclusively revealed as Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. St. Paul insists on the manifestation of God's power through the working of the spirit who gave life to Jesus' dead humanity and called it to the glorious state of lordship. I tell you, when I first time heard this, I was so excited. The Trinity, before incarnation, Trinity after incarnation, Trinity after the resurrection, there is difference. That is why the resurrection of Jesus is a transcendent intervention of God himself in creation, in the whole creation and in the history. And when we believe this, then we can say, I believe in Jesus Christ. So Emmanuel means the Emmanuel means, God with us means this state of the Trinity that the risen Lord, he said, when I am lifted up, I will attract everyone with me. Everyone with me. Everyone I will take into heaven. That is the dogma of the ascension. So when you have the feast of ascension, you must see the reading of that day and the teaching about the ascension. And when he ascended with the whole humanity into the, so there to the Father's right hand, <laughs> that is what is to be understood. The right hand of the Father does not mean that God has a right hand. That is a majestic position of God. It does not mean that it is exactly a place. 